Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, I wanted to talk about collectibles. Of course, we all collect watches, as many as we can, we want to experience them all, but they're not exactly all collectibles. Some of them are pretty much run-of-the-mill, produced in the thousands and uh, very, very popular. But who knows, uh, even those sometimes like the Rolex watches in 20 years could become collectibles. I think in general you want to have an eye for something that's really unusual, really well-made, really beautiful. And, uh, and who knows what can happen in the future. Of course, these days we all talk about watches like there are investments. Uh, people think uh, an investment is when you buy a watch at the Rolex AD and uh, can sell it for double the price the next day. That's not exactly what one would consider an investment. Uh, I think you would agree uh, with that. And it's kind of insulting for the people who's, who've been actually collecting watches by passion, for the passion of the beauty uh, of it for, for decades. And uh, sometimes see the fruits, uh, the, the, the rewards of, of their patience, of their, of their passion. And some uh, watches, some models explode in, in prices. Some, uh, for example, uh, some Speedmasters, you know, some people collect Speedmasters and some of them became really rare because they have that little special thing. And obviously the all the, the Rolex models, the uh, Submariners, they've been dissected, they've been uh, subdivided into so many categories that uh, everything has become special, even when uh, back then it, it really wasn't. So who knows what can happen? And that's why I have a, a bunch of watches here that I want to use uh, as examples uh, of uh, what could be a collectible or what is already a collectible. And it can come at all price points. So you don't have to be a millionaire uh, to um, to collect something uh, that is worth something, that is going to keep its value if we want to talk about uh, money. Uh, but most importantly, I want to talk about something that is going to remain interesting for, for the decades to come. Now, one of the first good watches that I purchased was a bit of a, of a lucky find. Uh, and it's not one that rose in price after you know buying it at retail or something. Uh, it's one that I kind of got hip to thanks to the Urban Gentry, a very good video from a TGV about the uh, Longines Legend Diver, and, espe and especially the no date. So here is a subdivision uh, for a few years. It came with non without a date, and then they made it with a date, which kind of ruined the symmetry of the of the dial. And um, everyone got hip to it. The prices rose above retail prices on, on eBay. And uh, because I was, uh, sometimes you have to, to scour the web to find uh, those, uh, those lucky watches, uh, like I did for this uh, Seiko, for example. Uh, and I did the same with uh, Longines. I was very familiar with Japan, with the local uh, ads, the local uh, version of eBay. And, uh, and I found this not with a watch retailer, but with a sort of a second-hand retailer of all sorts of things at uh, around the 1200 US uh, dollar, uh, dollar mark. And a friend of mine bought it for me and I went to pick it up in Japan on one of my trips. So full set with the box. And as usual, when you buy something in Japan, it's in perfect condition, very barely any marker on it. And it's incredibly accurate. So a great purchase there, uh, obviously worth uh, pretty much double what I, what, I, what I paid for. And I considered selling it many times, but uh, the thing is, when you've been collecting something special if you if you if you sell it because uh, because of the of the money uh, you might regret it because uh, afterwards you can't get it back it's too late you're going to have to pay the big price also the fun of owning a piece like this that has become collectible and uh, if you got it at a great price and especially if you found it very far away at a at a great price uh it, the 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 pleasure is double. The pleasure is to, to own this piece that everybody wants and that to know that you haven't paid through the roof for it. Uh, once you've uh, realized your investment, if you want to consider it as an investment, then uh, that's it. You, you got money, but you don't, have the, you don't have a special watch anymore. So I haven't sold this piece. You know, a friend of mine wanted to buy it from me. And sometimes... Obviously, the collection grows and uh, you kind of want to uh, 
to get back some money on some of the, the pieces you bought earlier on because you got something more expensive. This one is not very expensive, all things considered, when you have, for example, uh, a Patek. But, you know, first the brand Longines, you gotta have one, you know, it used to be Top Dog and, uh, and their heritage pieces are the ones that uh, really hit the spot. Of course, yeah, inside is just an ETA, but it is very accurate, as I mentioned. And uh, the watch is just so impressive, this uh, box sapphire, the, the crown, it's so well made. A fairly big watch to, to wear, but, but so unique. So I could never uh, resort to, uh, to selling it. So it's still in my collection and uh, today I was wearing it. It's, uh, and it's a big pleasure, it's a special pleasure. And that's the thing with collectibles. So I mentioned, uh, I found uh, this, uh, this Seiko 5. You know, Seiko 5, uh, they used to do quite cheeky homages, as you can see here. And finding these uh, is much harder to, than finding the uh, actual pieces that they are a, a homage to. In, uh, in many cases, uh, Seiko 5 has stopped, kind of stopped doing these, uh, these models. And so they're, they're very sought after. Obviously, they don't trade for thousands and thousands of dollars. But still, some people will pay more than what you got because I paid these uh, pretty much at less than retail i think uh, uh i got this uh this one and uh, and a couple more i had the full gold and the silver one it was the, it was the pleasure of finding those more than owning them the, the pleasure of finding them was great because i went to a small island on the outskirts of hong kong and found it in an old mom and pop shop and they, they had them in the window probably for for years nobody <laughs> ever bothered looking and uh, and or, or buying them and they gave me a little discount on the actual retail price of these uh, watches. And I got the full box and papers. I've kept one for myself. It kind of pinches the skin. It's pretty horribly made. Uh, but it's so cool at the same time with this champagne dial. And uh, I sold two of them, you know, uh, made a little bit of money, which kind of pays for, for, for this one. Uh, but, but then once you've sold them, that's it. The pleasure, the pleasure is gone. So there's a bit of jubilation if you can make a bit of money, but you should keep the, the ones that are really speaking to you. And uh, this one here, uh, yeah, people were talking about it on the, on the, the forums, on the, the Facebook pages, in, in the comments of YouTube videos, where do you find them? Can't find them anymore. And so they were not made in, that, uh, in big numbers and they made it with different dials. So this particular dial, which is sort of an explorer dial mixed with a, um, with the Nautilus shape, uh, quite hard to, to find. And uh, again, with a deep Google search, I found it on a Dutch local trading website. And since I, I can speak some Dutch, uh, I asked the guy and I could transfer the money from my account in Europe to, to buy it. And I paid like, I don't know, 60 or 70 euros. And uh, obviously could trade out of it for, for a profit, but it, it's so cool. Uh, I just love to own them. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think about selling them, thinking nobody's going to care for them. I'm already going to give my kids uh, much nicer watches, like, for example, this, uh, this Omega is their first nice watch. Uh, but they, they will enjoy it just as much. And, uh, and, and who knows? Yeah, value-wise, I guess it, it can't go down because it's always going to be special. Seiko will always be there. Will always be, always be there in the heart of collectors, of Seiko fans. So there, there's no rush. Also, uh, one thing important to no note about those collectibles, there's no rush to, to sell them. Just enjoy them. Uh, if they don't pinch, pinch your wrists like these <laughs> terrible bracelets uh, do. Now, let's step up a bit in, uh, in, in class. Or just one, one, one more thing. You might wonder why I have this. It, it's kind of a collectible uh, in itself. It's made in the millions, in the gazillions. Uh, probably some of them are made now uh, out of uh, Japan. I guess this one is uh, it's probably made in China or yeah, made in China. Uh, so it, it's really super cheap. But it's a collectible of, uh, in, in its own right. And uh, some of them, I'm sure you want to keep them, the first editions, you want to keep them in the box. And are probably uh, actually valuable. This is just uh, the current version uh, of the watch that we all wanted when we were kids, if you're from the 70s like me. And a uh, really, really cool piece. My son will love it. And uh, that's going into his collection. So that has value as well, but it's not really a true collectible. Uh, now, one of the early watches that I bought, my first luxury watch was this Omega. Why do I bring it? Uh, it's a cool watch, obviously. It's got a lot of uh, cool tech with the coaxial, uh, good power reserve. 
um, column wheel, good water resistance, very nice back. I love, I love the, the clasp. So it's a cool watch, uh, but they, they've made many and you can buy them at a great discount, almost half price. Still brand new in the box in uh, different colors. Uh, but it's been uh, discontinued, so that's something also to, to look for, is the, like we saw with the Longines, is the discontinuation of pieces that make, makes them collectibles, and you have to be forward-looking. I was a bit late on the Longines train, I was lucky to be able to catch this piece, uh, but, I w but I'm still uh, on time with the, uh, the Omega one. So who knows if it's going to... Oh, I think, I think it's cool. I think it looks great. I, I love the, the zangers. I love the, the bezel, the dashes of colors. Great AR coating on these. And it's very modern in the, the, the built and, uh, and everything. Who knows if it's going to become uh, collectible. I think the uh, Omega 2020 Olympics are already trading uh, quite high. Uh, these are true collectibles uh, already. Uh, this one is more of a gamble. I, I keep it because it's a cool watch. Uh, I think it's going to be a great watch for my kids when they're, you know, hitting around 16, 18 years old. Uh, will I still have it by then? You know, it's still a long time, still 10 years to go. Uh, but who knows? Uh, it's been discontinued, I believe, uh, in this format. They've always been doing racings, and maybe the next one will be better. Um, at this point, maybe the, the value of your, uh, the collectability value we will go down if it, if it's replaced by something better thinner probably uh than this uh but but who knows uh, i think uh it, it has some uh thin legs to to stand on uh we, we'll see what becomes of it it's not yet a collectible but discontinuing something always makes it uh, a bit more valuable and uh, if you got it at a great price what's the rush Speaking of great price and speaking of uh, gaining value, but is it a collectible? The Rolex Explorer 2 16570 D-Series here from the mid-2000s. Doesn't have the Rolex Rolex on the Rehort quite yet, but it's the no-hole case. Totally unpolished, that's why you see all the scratches, but all the metal is still there. My first Rolex purchase, uh, absolutely stunning watch, and it's gained so much value. I paid uh, 37,000 Hong Kong and now they're trading for almost uh, uh, even above uh, 60. So almost, uh, yeah, good, uh, more than 30% uh, increase in value, 40% for, for this piece since I got it only three years ago. And, uh, and, with, and it's justified because when you see the... Um, where the, the other ones, the, uh, the GMTs are trading with same movement, you know, s same build, and just the difference is the, is, the, is the rotating bezel. This one is original because it, it's white uh, and it's, it's more sleek, so it's going to marry better with more formal attire than the, than the GMTs yeah, in a way. So it was about time for its recognition. It's been talked about by many YouTubers. I think Archie Luxury was the one first to have it in his collection and to really praise this watch. Uh, so praise Archie for, for this. Uh, he's the reason why I got mine. Having said that, they've made so many of them. Let's dissociate a bit the, the value appreciation with the collectability. Um, it's... Uh, there's so many of them on the market. It's not really a collectible per se. There is some um, segmentation. Sorry, segmentation of the the market happening on these. There are little differences on the case, on the movement, uh, on the loom. Most importantly, uh, the older ones pre two thousands will have the loom that uh, that that fades becomes yellowish. And uh, some dials as well uh, will, will uh, also fade this tarnish, and um, that gives a, a vintage appeal and uh, increases the prices. This one, I wanted something that's very usable, so you see the loom is still active, it's Super Luminova, uh, which uh, at first made it uh, less expensive than the ones that, uh, that had uh, the, uh, the, the tritium uh, dials. Uh, but, but now the, the, the value is, is coming up and people who want to have a vintage watch, semi-vintage watch, uh, entering the vintage realm, let's say, uh, but that's very usable, they're going to be attracted by, by this piece. It kind of straddles the, the line there. I don't think it's really collectible because there's so many, so many of them, uh, but it's, uh, it's a good asset, appreciating asset. What's really collectible is the Sea Dweller 4000, 
which is really a modern built uh, watch. Yet, uh, you know, he's got the, it's got the, um, the, the maxi dial. It's got the, the uh, ceramic bezel. Uh, but it's, uh, it was only produced for less than three years. It was before the whole craze for the, the Rolex Steel Sports. And uh, it was too much in competition with the, the Submariner of the time. So the people didn't want to spend the extra for something that they don't use, uh, i.e. The, uh, the extreme depth rating of 4,000 feet. And uh, so they kind of, many people passed by and now it's getting its recognition, it's rising in price already since I bought it, only I bought it last year. It's already uh, up a couple of thousand uh, US. Uh, amazing watch, such a cool bezel. And you get a, you get something, you man this one manages to be a, a Rolex to the sports, which is produced in the, usually in the thousands. And it manages to make it uh, special because it was only produced for a short time period. And what's so great is that you have the full graduation of the bezel. It's only 40 millimeters, while the next one is 43, which makes this one even more special. There's no Cyclops, which is very pleasing to the, the, the eye. And, um, and, and the case is not really the maxi case. It's also, it blends in very well uh, with the look of the, of the Oyster. So this is really the, a big rising value. This is a true collectible and yet it's a very usable watch which you know kind of becomes uh kind of becomes a uh, risky and plays on your mind oh it's become collectible the price is rising i don't want to wear my watch anymore uh kind of a sad thing that can happen to uh, to your watch in a way and some people who bought a watch just because they loved it sometimes don't want to wear it and uh, sell them because they gain so much value they don't really realize that the, the true value is to own the watch uh, once the money is just is just money you can always make more money tomorrow uh, just get a better job and work harder uh, getting a cool watch uh, after you sold it as i said it's too late the, the <laughs> you're not going to get it back uh, unless you you pay the premium yourself so i'm really happy to have this watch because it wears so great uh, I don't have a Submariner. I like to have something a bit more special than the than the Sub, and, uh, and this is it. Uh, very happy with this one, true collectible uh, of sorts. And the last watch uh, I have here, uh, I have other watches that uh, we can bring into the conversation, maybe into another video. Uh, I have this uh, Calatrava. I think the Patek Calatravas are very interesting, uh, interestingly priced at the moment. And the size, people come back to smaller sizes. This one is 36, but with the addition of some excitement, the buttons on the side for the travel time function and uh, the crown guard, it wears bigger. And most importantly, it's such a cool, cool look with the sector dial, two sub dials. People wonder what's going on here. And this one, I got it for, for a song, you know, uh, through a professional dealer, they just priced solo. I jumped on it. Uh, you, that's the thing with our collectibles. You always have to, you can't go after them and uh, and pay pay the full price. You know, you try. You have to scour the web, put some uh, some research, um, use the research tool uh, with alerts on uh, Chrono Twenty Four and eBay or whatever uh, app you want to use, and uh, try to find those special pieces when they come at the right price. That's what I did with my with my Patex. Uh, also have uh, the uh, five two nine six. That is a fantastic price in uh, in Japan here and uh well this one is a bit bigger 36 39 millimeter uh or, or 38 it's an instant classic and it will if you get it for a good price it will never lose its uh, its value patek make quite quite a few watches compared to say longer for example which i think will become collectibles or longer because they don't make as many of them uh, but for, for now they're very soft on the market but uh, patek uh, although they make many uh, they, they keep their value if you, and if you get them at a, grad, at a good price then it's going to keep the, they're going to keep their values I think the, uh, the, this little one here is a bit less common especially in, the, in this dial vi variation the variation is all uh, it's all about variations you know when it, with collectability collectability sorry uh, and, and this dial version with the, the 3.9 is, is a bit uh, more unusual and I think better balanced than the one with the um, Bregan numerals that doesn't have this uh, sector uh, presentation. Uh, <coughs> the one with the Bregan numerals, I think the subdials are too close to the, the top and uh, bottom numerals, which, which looks a bit, uh, a bit forced. Uh, this one is a bit nicer. 
and uh, obviously you can use it as a travel time or as a GMT depending on where you set the, the top dial you can use it as a 24-hour dial normally and then when you travel uh, you uh, dissociate the you're going to dissociate the, uh, the, the the two hands otherwise uh, I use it here as a uh, as a GMT and I keep a European time here uh, beautiful little watch love to look at the, um, the the movement it's got the uh, Calatrava uh, clasp Calatrava clasp cross on the white gold clasp such a such a stunner catches the light like nothing else this is when you see the value of a true through a workmanship a very very special watch has just one scratch uh, here uh, I'm really enjoying it. You can wear it casually or, or formally, uh, and I think it's uh, it's a collectible because it's not produced in uh, in huge numbers. It's a special dial, and uh, if you get it at a good price, really, it's one that's going to keep uh, its value. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this conversation. It's Friday evening here, and uh, I wish you all uh, a great weekend. Stay safe from uh, the, the pandemic. And uh, yeah, think about uh, what could be the next uh, collectible. What is worth keeping? Not for not just not just for the money, just for the beauty of the beauty of it, beauty of the the hobby. Let me know in the comments uh, what kind of uh, watches you you like to collect and uh, what what do you have your your sights on. Bye bye, guys.